Echo 201, Study Session 9, The Theory of Perfect Competition, Introduction. A useful method of market classification is the degree of competition available. Hence, a distinction is usually made between perfect and imperfect competition. You will examine the theory of perfect market in this study session. When you have studied this session, you should be able to 1. I like the characteristics and behaviors of the perfect competitive market. 2. Discuss the relationship between the firm's market supply and the marginal cost curve. 3. Point out the conditions for short-run and long-run equilibrium of the market. Assumptions of the theory of perfect competition. The theory of perfect competition is built on a number of assumptions. These are number one, the firm is assumed to be a price taker. This means that no individual is so big as to influence the market price. Hence, the firm must accept as given whatever price is ruling in the market. Two, the industry is also characterized by freedom of entry and exit. This implies that any firm is free to join or leave the industry. Existing firms cannot bar the entry of new firms and there are no legal restrictions on entry or exit. Three, the industry or market includes a large number of firms and buyers so that each individual firm, however large, supplies only a small part of the total quantity offered in the market. The buyers are also numerous so that no monopolistic power can affect the workings of the market. Other important assumptions include perfect information about market prices, perfect mobility of products dealt with. While it is perfectly true that a market structure in which all these situations are present is rare in real world, we have some approximations, e.g. agricultural goods and industrial raw materials. In spite of these, there is no doubt that perfect competition is an ideal situation. A firm in a perfect competition is a price taker. Therefore, it faces a perfectly elastic demand curve for its product. Also, since the market price is unaffected by changes in its output, it follows that the marginal revenue resulting from an increase in volume of sales is constant and equal to the price of the product. An example will make this point clearer. Let's assume that a farmer faces a perfectly elastic demand for yam at a market price of 100 naira per tuber. This implies that for each additional tuber sold, the farmer would realize 100 naira. But this amount is also his average revenue. Thus, the demand curve facing the firm is then identical with both the average marginal revenue curve, thus P equals AR equals MR, all remaining constant as output varies. This, I tell you again, it is however important to mention that since price is constant, each additional unit sold will increase total revenue of the farmer. It therefore follows that total revenue rises steadily as output rises. Short run equilibrium. Since the term 
in perfect competition faces a given market price. The firm adjusts to different market situations by changing its output. But in the short run, the firm is faced with a set of fixed and variable factors. Hence, its practical method of adjustment is via the variation of its output decision. Perfect competitive firm, like any profit maximizing firm, will seek to produce at the point where marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost. And since marginal revenue of the firm is also equal to its price, it follows that the firm will equate marginal cost of its product with the price of its output. Hence, the short-run equilibrium position of the firm can be represented as follows. Any other output is inefficient. For instance, at output Q2, MC is greater than P. Thus, it will pay the firm to reduce its output. Conversely, at output Q1, price is greater than MC. It pays the firm to increase its output level. It should be reiterated that in the short run, the firm can make profit or loss or break even. The actual position of the firm depends on the position of the average cost. If at the equilibrium output level of the firm, price is greater than the average cost, then it will make profit. On the other hand, it could make a loss if it is not covering average cost. Even when the firm is making a loss at this point, it could still continue in business provided it is able to cover at least its average variable cost. Short run supply curves. The supply curve shows the relationship between quantity, supplied, and price. As we said earlier, the competitive firm is a price taker. Therefore, in order to derive its supply curve, we need to know how much the firm will supply at each different prices. The figure below shows a firm's marginal cost curve with three alternative demand curves. The marginal cost curve shows the quantity the firm is willing to supply at each price level. For prices below average variable cost, the firm will supply zero. For prices above the average variable cost, the firm will equate price and marginal cost. As price rises in the figure from two to three to four, the firm wishes to increase its production from Q1 to Q2 to Q3. For prices below to Naira, output will be zero because the firm is better off if it shuts down. The point E1, where price equals average variable cost, is called the shutdown point. These points are then transferred to curve 2 to show the supply curve. In perfect competition, therefore, the part of the firm's marginal cost curve above the average cost curve has the same shape as the firm's supply curve. The determination of short-run equilibrium price. The equilibrium price in the industry is determined by the forces of demand and supply in the industry. The industry supply curve is simply the horizontal sum of the marginal cost curves of all the individual firms in the industry. Let's assume there are two firms A and B in the industry. If their individual supply curves are shown below, then the industry supply curve is simply the horizontal summation of the two supply curves. 
although no one firm can influence market price significantly, the collective action of all firms in the industry and the collective actions of the household together determine the market price at the point where demand and supply curves intersect. At this equilibrium point, there is stability in the market and there is no motivation to change in the short run. Also, each firm is operating at the profit maximizing point at which its price is equal to its marginal cost. Long run equilibrium. The long run equilibrium under perfect competition is characterized by free entry and exit. Earlier, we have said that in the short run equilibrium situation, firms may be making profits or losses or just breaking even. If existing firms are making profit, new firms may be attracted to the industry to share in the profit. On the other hand, if existing firms are making losses, some firms will leave the industry and seek better returns elsewhere. However, when firms are just breaking even, there is no incentive for other firms to enter the industry or for firms in the industry to leave. These three situations are further illustrated as follows. In figure 9.51, firms in the industry are making losses. Since price is lower than the short run average total cost this will force some firms to leave the industry for elsewhere when this happens supply will decrease and price will increase this will continue until figure 9.52 position is attained the converse argument be old for figure 9.53. In the long run equilibrium situation, three distinct features are obtained. No firm will want to vary the output of its existing plants. Short run marginal cost curve must be equal to price. Two, profit earned by existing plants must be zero. This implies that short run average total cost must equal price. 3. No firm can end profit by building a plant of a different size. This implies that each existing firm must be producing at the lowest point on its long run average cost curve. These conditions mean that all firms in the industry should be in the position illustrated in figure 9.6. In the above situation, the firm is operating the optimum plant size. Any plant size to the left or to the right of Q1 will be suboptimal and it will pay well to advise firms to increase or to decrease output as the case may be as regards its existing plant size. An industry is nothing more than a collection of firms. For an industry to be in the long run equilibrium, each firm must be in their long run equilibrium. It follows that when a perfectly competitive industry is in the long run equilibrium, all firms in the industry will be selling at a price equal to the short run average total cost. That is, and they must be in zero profit equilibrium. Summary. In this study session, we noted that perfect competitive market is characterized by certain attributes which include free entry and exit, perfect information by the sellers and buyers, large numbers of buyers and sellers, homogeneity of products sold, and no discrimination by seller or buyer. A perfect competitive market is, however, very rare in real life. This is the end of study session 9. 
Thanks for listening.